The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and today we are joined by Melanie Whitewich. Melanie is the owner and operator of Shaco, a fashion and clothing boutique focused on clothing for babies, children, and mothers. Here to talk more about her journey into the fashion world, please welcome Melanie. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> so, in your own words, what exactly is Shaco? So Shaco is a collection of, I try and go towards modern um, cl clothing for children, babies, women. Um, it's got a bit of my own twist on things. I try and keep things neutral. I have a son and a daughter, and so um, trying to be able to pass things down to both of my kids is kind of my focus, and I think it's a lot of other moms' focuses. So that's kind of where I try and keep it is more neutral and um, and modern. So is this store a storefront? Is it online? How do you operate? Um, so initially, I started online. Um, I launched in September of 2021, actually on my daughter's first birthday. Um, and so I started online. I was promoting myself on social media. And then actually just this January, I got into a couple of storefronts. Um, and so I'm in a couple of stores in Port Perry, one in Lindsay, and I'm working on one for Bowmanville. So um, I don't have my own brick and mortar that I run myself, but I'm in a few of store, a few other stores that uh, they do promote my stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Exciting growth for you. Yeah, very exciting. So what made you want to start Shaco and start manufacturing your clothing? Yeah, so in January of 2020, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter, Shay, who I've named Shaco after. Um, I if everybody remembers, 2020 was the year of craziness. And so I found out I was pregnant. I ended up losing the job that I had had for four years, um, which was devastating. And then I ended up getting another job when I was three months pregnant with Shay. And I ended up losing that because of COVID. So um, I spent my entire pregnancy just being at home and trying to figure out ways to generate some kind of income. And um, it wasn't until just after she was born that I came up with the thought of, why don't I just start my own children's line? Right. Um, I had no previous fashion or <laughs> um, entrepreneurial experience. Uh, and so this was a huge step for me. And I just was thinking about it a lot. And I started coming up with ideas. And then in September 2021, I launched Shaco. And you mentioned in that that you have two children. I so do. is Shay and Co is the Co part for your son, or what does Co stand for? Um, Co is for collective. So I do have some other brands, um, local makers, on my website as well that I promote. And so I, my idea was to have it as a collection of other makers. Um, I love to support other brands, and so being able to do that through my own brand is really important for me. Um, so. My son doesn't have anything to do with the name, unfortunately. <laughs> he wasn't around when I came up with it. Um, I do have some pieces named after him. His name's Miles. Um, and so I do have a uh, Miles play suit that I have named after him. Um, but unfortunately, he's not part of the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. Maybe you'll start a business in the future. Yeah, Miles. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> or he could just have a signature collection yeah. as you continue along yeah. your journey. I've got so many ideas. So. <laughs> So talk to us a little bit about the ideas you had when you mm -hmm. launched Shaco. Uh, you manufacture your own clothing. I and do. as you mentioned, you didn't go to school for mm -hmm. fashion design. Yeah. So how did you know how to do it? I didn't. <laughs> um, so I don't have like a business background. I don't have a fashion background by any means. Um, I've always been creative in some way. I just didn't know where that creativity was. Um, and so trying to figure out where I was going to um, figure that out was really challenging right. for me. Um, so with Shaco, I basically started with wholesale. And so I sourced out um, businesses that I was trying to keep 
from the US or from Canada, preferably Canada. Um, and so I was just buying wholesale. It was getting kind of challenging for me because I didn't know what I should be buying, how much, what sizes, all of that. And so I got to a point where I didn't want to rely on another business to promote my business or to support my business. Sure. And so I bought a cheap little sewing machine off of Amazon <laughs> and I made a beanie and I was so proud of myself that I made a hat. <laughs> and then it just went from there. I ended up buying an actually decent sewing machine and I'm self-taught um, with all of my sewing. Um, and now I make all of the Shaco um, signature pieces. I make myself in my basement at home. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've only been sewing for a year and a half. And I guess this is just my thing. I didn't realize I was creative in this way until I started doing it. So you really stumbled into yeah. becoming a manufacturer of children's yeah. clothing yourself. I did, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So walk us through the journey when you realized you had the beanie, mm -hmm. you loved your product, and you were gonna dabble in some other aspects. Yeah. Did you start Googling how to make a children's t-shirt and <laughs> figure it out? Or how did you actually put into what you had in your mind into yeah. practice? So Etsy's a beautiful place. Um, I found some sewing patterns on there um, or Pinterest, I found some free ones on there. And they give you like step-by-step -step directions. So I kind of just went with that and it was a lot of trial and error. It was a lot of um, frustration trying to figure it out. And I think back when I need to humble myself, I think back to the very first shirt that I made or the very first dress that I made. And I keep every piece that I make for the first time because it's just a really good reminder to look back and be like, okay, you need to humble yourself. Like this is where you started. This is where you're at. And the first ones are always so rough and they <laughs> are so frustrating to do because I had no idea what I was doing, but it, it turned out to be a really beautiful thing. I just needed to be patient with myself. And so it's pretty funny to look at the, the first ones I did because they took a really long time to make and now I make them in like five minutes. So it's just kind of funny that way, but just step-by-step -step tutorials on um, sewing patterns has been great. Very <laughs> That's cool. That's where I learned. <laughs> and one of my questions was gonna be, how long does it take yeah. to manufacture this stuff? So you've got it down to five minutes an item? It depends on the piece. Um, so I actually brought a few things that I am going to be launching for uh, my spring and summer stuff. So. I have um, these little sets. So the shirt and the shorts, I can do that in like 20 minutes. Wow. Um, start to finish. It's it's pretty simple, these ones. Um, it might not look simple, <laughs> but they've become very, like, very simple for me to do. Something like these dresses are a little bit more time consuming um, just because there's a lot of pressing and a lot of uh, just like intricate details that right. like going into like a deep V and things like that that just take a little bit more time to to do. Um, I'm also a bit of a perfectionist by fault I think um, and so sometimes things take a little bit longer than I would like but anywhere between five and thirty minutes depending on the piece is um, kind Your of standard where my standard time. yeah yeah and before the show, mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of exploring some yeah. of those uh, materials. And I have to say the quality of yeah. the fabric that you're using is wonderful. Thank you. How do you source that stuff? How do you know mm -hmm. where to go to find material like that? Yeah, so that was one thing that was really important for me when I started Shaco is I'm kind of, my husband says I'm a bit of a psycho about fabrics and like garment care. Um, I don't put anything that is cotton or linen in the dryer <laughs> um, and so most of my kids clothing are hung to dry <laughs> and so I treat my fabric the way that I would treat my clothing um, the standard that I hold is very high maybe too high for some people's taste but I try and source all of my fabric in Canada I actually use a company out in Iroquois that I just love they've been fantastic um, so I try and keep it organic sustainable ethical um, and 
I only really use cotton and linen. They're kind of my go-tos just because the quality is always so beautiful and it lasts. Um, and it's lightweight and it's, it's, just, it's just a good fabric. Um, and so, yeah, I try and source all of my fabric in Canada or the US. There are a couple of brands that I specifically use. I try and stick with my three. Um, but yeah, those are my, that's my go-to is I look for the quality which is a great thing to look for. Mm -hmm. So when it came to your creating your own clothing, you figured out the patterns, you've mm -hmm. kind of decided what direction you want to go t towards. Mm -hmm. When it comes to sourcing fabric, thread, all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, how do you know where to go and look? Were you yeah. just Googling fabric near me? Or how yeah. did you figure out the wholesale <laughs> process of that? Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it. I really had no direction my I can't say I can't say no direction my grandma is a beautiful sewist and she has been sewing her entire life and so I got quite a few tips from her um, for like f not f necessarily fabric but for like thread and just material that I need um, and then as for fabric goes I just kept searching for fabric in Canada and I would buy like small amounts of things just to kind of see what the quality was like and I found my two that I really really love and I've repeatedly like just bought from them right. and so those are kind of my go-to's but yeah Google <laughs> I just googled <laughs> so when it comes to investing so much mm -hmm. into these pieces right you've yeah. thought of every aspect that goes into them mm -hmm. I imagine that figuring out a pricing scale for this stuff has yeah. got to be difficult yes walk us through <laughs> that journey for you um, so in the beginning I was pricing quite low and I had quite a few of my friends tell me you're not charging enough um, and for me it was it, I was trying to stay humble because I was brand new at this I uh, might I look back at the quality and it wasn't there for me so I feel like I priced accordingly in the beginning as my skills have progressed I have felt more confident to increase my prices. And as everybody knows as well, inflation does not help with that either. And so I have kind of looked at the brands that I kind of aspire to be kind of leveled up with. And I look at what they're making, the fabric they're using and what they're charging. And I need to take my time into consideration, especially with two little ones at home. Sure. Um, and so, I've learned that with my increase in price, it shows the confidence and I am confident in my products. And I think that the price needs to reflect that. And I have noticed that with my increase in price, my sales go up. So it's like people notice like the confidence sure. with the price, which is crazy to me. Um, but hey, if that's what people want, I'll give you that. <laughs> I think it's a, a matter of if you value your product, then others are going to value exactly. it too. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Yeah. And on that note, we are going to head into a commercial break. I'm here with Melanie, and we'll be right back. I'm Justice. And I'm Nia. And we believe dreams fuel revolutions. That's why we're engaging with Canadian icons and the causes they support. Join us for these inspiring conversations and find out how you can be revolutionary. Now you can enjoy Disney Plus on Ignite TV. Just say Disney Plus into your Ignite TV voice remote and stream Disney Plus movies and series like Marvel Studios, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. For Wakanda! Star Wars, The Bad Batch. Real subtle. And Strange World. The world is so big. Upgrade to Ignite TV today and get six months of Disney Plus on us. Visit rogers.com slash Disney to get started. Hi, I'm Jackie Hermans, the host of Uxbridge Scugog Live, where we talk about everything going on in your community. From events to programs, new products, new businesses. If something is going down in the community, we're going to let you know about it. Only on Rogers TV. Welcome. Join me on the Rogers TV Durham for learning yoga in just 10 classes. My name is Sri. I'm a yoga teacher at Yoga Point, and it's my privilege to spend the next few weeks with you. Being stuck in your home during this pandemic also means you have a home. 
Waiting in line for groceries means you have money for groceries. The isolation, being broke and totally scared about what's next. I was feeling that before this crisis. People say we're in this together, but me? I've got no one. Youth who have aged out of the child welfare system are in danger of falling further through the cracks because of today's crisis. They need your support. Please give today at helpyouthnow.ca. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to Modern Business, the show that bridges the gap between viewer and entrepreneur. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we are joined by Melanie Whitewich of Shaco, a sustainable, modern fashion brand focused on babies, children, and mothers. Welcome back, Melanie. <laughs> so before the break, we were talking about the pricing structure and mm -hmm. how you ended up raising your prices and in turn, received more people coming to purchase your product. Yeah. So when I think of that, and I think of your operation being out of your home, mm -hmm. online, in stores, all I can think about is inventory. Yes. How do you keep up with the inventory <laughs> demands being not only the store of your brand, but the manufacturer of it as well, mm -hmm. and the solo manufacturer of it? Yeah, so it does come with its challenges. Um, I decided that becoming more of a sustainable business was more feasible for me. Um, I also, I just, I don't love having inventory just lying around. And I think it's more personal to just like make it as it is needed. Um, I do have two little kids at home and so I don't always have the time to just like be downstairs for hours at a time and just so, so, so. Um, and so when I have the time, I'll just like kind of plug away at things. Uh, with the one store that I'm at in Port Perry, I can just bring as I feel I need to. Um, and so I do have a very small amount of inventory. Um, I try and keep with what is most popular for the colors and the sizes and the styles. And so I do have a couple of those on hand, but I try not to keep like a huge um, inventory on hand just for sustainability purposes. Okay, so it's more of a made to order business yeah. than it is necessarily you're curating lines and right. creating a set amount of the lines. Right. So in theory, nothing that you manufacture for your business would ever go out of stock. Right, exactly. Which is great as well, yeah. I guess, for Yeah, for unless the I can't public. find the fabric. <laughs> 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 unless the fabric is just gone, then that's another story, but I try and buy as much as I can <laughs> just in case because I want to avoid that. Um, but no, it will never go out of stock unless the fabric is just discontinued. Right. And have you ever purchased too much fabric for a certain <laughs> piece and then gone, it's not moving or mm -hmm. I have to pivot? And then what'd you do? Um, I wouldn't say that I bought too much for a specific piece. I, <laughs> learning how to buy fabric was very much a learning experience for me. I would become like a hoarder of fabric. Like I'd see it and I'd be like, I need that when I don't actually need it. I feel like we all do that with something in sure. our lives. <laughs> Mine was fabric. Um, and so I just had this copious amount of fabric that I was not gonna use that I didn't need just because I thought it was nice. And so I haven't gotten to a point where I'm buying too much of one thing and then it not selling because there's always a purpose for it and I always find a way to utilize what I have on hand before I buy more now. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a learning thing for me but I've never had to worry too, too much about something not moving. That's great. Yeah, I'm and very, very thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work with the brands that you carry? Mm -hmm. Are you purchasing a certain amount of items from that brand and then taking it into your store? Mm -hmm. Or is that also not necessarily made to order, but made to reorder for the customer? Yeah, so um, a couple of the brands that I have on hand, I they just kind of drop it off to me. And then as it sells, I will pay okay. them yeah so I don't have like a wholesale thing going with them um, I just we've come to an agreement with that and and that's what works for all of us um, and so I just get a specific amount and then they trust me with their product and it 
really it works really well for us. That's that's lucky. It is. It's a low yeah. risk way of adding inventory into yeah. your shop. I think relationship is key. Um, I have a really great relationship with with these owners as well, and so I think just having that mutual trust is really important. So talk to us a little bit about building the Shaco website. Mm -hmm. How did that work for you? How did, how did you figure out how to put your pieces online and have the transaction happen there? Yeah, that was a ride. Um, I have very little tech experience. I have, okay, I have no tech experience. <laughs> um, that's not my like strong suit. Um, I would say I'm technically, technologically illiterate in some ways, and so building a website was really scary for me, but I did it, and I think because I had this drive in me that like, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm just gonna figure it out as I go, that is kind of what got me to where I'm at with the website. Um, it took me months to do it, but it was all just took it step by step, um, lots of YouTube videos. Okay. <laughs> um, I actually did reach out to one of my girlfriends, Caitlin, and she helped me a lot That's lovely. <laughs> with all of that. And so, yeah, it was a lot of trial and error, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and for those listening, if you're wondering who Caitlin is, Caitlin is from the Green Tree Frog in Kawartha. She was on an earlier episode of Modern Business, so head over to our show page to check that out. So what service providers did you use to mm -hmm. build your website? Are you using a Shopify or Etsy platform? Yeah, so I use both. Um, okay. I started with Shopify. It just seemed like it made the most sense um, at the time. And so I started my Shopify account and built my website through there, uh, which I absolutely love. They're great. They do everything for you, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, and then I also built an Etsy shop uh, last January. I started that one. It has been quite successful there because they do a lot of the marketing and advertising for you which I really love um, and it's not expensive to like run a store through there um, and so I wasn't sure if I wanted to do Etsy but I just started putting small things on there um, that I can whip up really quick or things that I might have on hand okay um, that way I can have like a really quick turnaround for those so um, yeah I do both so Circling back to that inventory question, yes. <laughs> two separate websites, yes. two separate storefronts. Mm -hmm. Again, how do you manage the made to order right. side of that with two platforms? Are you separating inventory for each mm -hmm. website? Um, so I have the same items on my Shopify that I would have on my Etsy store. And so I've just kind of tailored my Etsy store to things that I can make in like five minutes or less. Okay. <laughs> because with Etsy, if anyone has an Etsy shop, they know that to have more success on Etsy, they want you to have a quick turnaround time. Okay. Uh, like within a few days, it needs to be shipped out. And so you can kind of change it to what works for you, but I want to be able to build my store on there. Um, and so I have like a three to five day it's at your door kind of service. Okay. Um, and so I make like scrunchies and bows and headbands and nursing pads and things like that that I can like whip up really quick or that I might have on hand already. Um, Cause sometimes when I have spare time, which is very, I don't really have spare time, but when I do have some downtime, I'll just whip up a couple things that I know will sell well. Um, and so I just have them ready to go or takes me no time to do them. Wow. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about the back end of that store, both stores, I guess. Mm -hmm. How did you figure out your shipping process? So <laughs> with my Shopify account, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, I had to figure out which would be the most feasible for customers. For myself, I don't love when I'm like checking out of somewhere and I'm like, yes, like this is my total. And then they slam me with like $20 in shipping. Mm -hmm. That just like hurts my soul. So I try and like make it, um, I guess pretty transparent as far as shipping goes. Of course, shipping costs have gone up recently and so I've had to adjust things accordingly, but I try and keep up with what other brands are doing for shipping that I would consider myself in the same category as, um, same like location as as well. And I try and work that way with my Shopify. Okay. As far as Etsy goes, they kind of set it for you, um, which is good to an extent, um, 
but they try and push the free shipping, which can be really challenging <laughs> sometimes. So I just adjust it as I feel needed. Um, but if you've ever gotten an order from me, <laughs> you'll know that I squish it as much as I can <laughs> to save you on shipping. So um, I just, yeah, I try and work with them, but also figure it out for myself. And do you have custom boxes that you use for shipping or anything like that? Um, so I use just like a poly mailer. I try oh. and use compostable ones, just sustainability. Yes, exactly. Sometimes they're hard to find, but um, I, yeah, I just, I use poly mailers cause they can fit a little bit easier in the mailbox. Very cool. <laughs> and cheaper to ship. <laughs> now talk to us a little bit about your marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. Other than your websites, what do you do to let people know about your store? Yeah, so marketing has not been my strong suit. Um, I have learned a lot trying to do that. So I do a lot of advertising on Instagram and Facebook um, and then obviously in person as well. So I always have business cards with me. I always bring up my little shop to people <laughs> just when I'm chatting with them. Um, everybody loves the small talk of like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, here's my card. This is what I'm doing. Um, or the storefronts that I'm in has been huge. Uh, I think that just being in those storefronts has been like the best free marketing for me. Um, I, I've gotten quite a larger following just from being in storefronts. Um, and so I, I really need to work on my marketing. It's not something that I prioritize. Um, I just, yeah, I need to work on that, but there's lots of outlets. So I try and utilize as many as I can. And I was gonna say, you know, it sounds like it's literally just you. It is this. just me. <laughs> so you're already wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully one day, if, if you're ready, you'll get mm -hmm. to the point where you can outsource that marketing for yeah, yourself. Yeah, that would be wonderful. So do you have a trade tip for our audience today? This could be a piece of advice somebody's yeah. given to you or a piece of advice you like to give others or just a general tidbit of information you want to share with the audience yeah. today. Yeah, so I think staying patient, having peace, and staying humble are three things that I really, I really remind myself of. Um, success doesn't always happen overnight, and sometimes we need to just trust that patience that it's gonna happen if you just stay consistent. Having peace that we're not gonna always be winning. Um, I've had, I think every business owner has had failures. And so just staying peaceful in those failures and taking them as a learning experience is really important. And then staying humble. It's really easy to get caught up in things sometimes that uh, might be unsavory, I guess you could say. Um, and so just staying humble, reminding yourself what you're doing this for and just keep working at it is really important. Um, and that's just, those are three things that I kind of run my business off of. Amazing, Melanie, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at The Local in Port Perry on Water Street. You can find me on uh, that place out in Queen, on Queen Street in Port Perry. You can find me at The Bloom Baby Shop in Lindsay. And I am working on getting into a store in Bowmanville that I'm not quite ready to share yet. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, it's a pretty popular baby store in Bowmanville. Um, and then you can find me online. And yeah, and on Instagram, shaco.ca. Awesome. Melanie, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. This has been another edition of Modern Business. I'm your host, Taylor Bercy, and we'll talk to you next time. Call the Rogers TV Viewer Response Line, email us, or connect with us on social media. journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Having this opportunity to envision what life as a foreign language journalist could look like